All right, welcome back to our little kitchen series as we build out our new kitchen. Last video, we assembled all the cabinet boxes ready to assemble, ready to go. And today I'm prepping everything to start putting cabinets into position, getting them all aligned and leveled and shimmed. This is my laser, I have it set up pretty, pretty good to where I have used it to find the highest part of the floor the whole way around, which is about a quarter of an inch difference between here and over there. Uh, and that makes a difference. You gotta account for that. So we also have to account for our finished flooring, which is a quarter inch thick uh, LVP. But there's no flooring underneath the cabinets because LVP is a floating floor. You don't want anything sitting on it. You want it kind of floating. So we put the cabinets in first, then we install the floor. Part of the floor will go in there, part of the floor will go into the uh, refrigerator cabinet. So the dishwasher is 34 and a half inches tall. All the base cabinets are 34 and a half inches tall. I have to add a quarter inch for my floor, so that's 34 and three quarters. Right here, it's 35. And over here, it's 34 and three quarters. And that's what we want. So when we install our base here, we're gonna shim it up to the 35 line so that over there it matches the 34 and 3 quarter line. Then from this line, we're going up 19 and a quarter to account for our granite thickness, which is I believe an inch and a quarter. So, so basically this is all gonna be uh, backsplash. This will be an oven, this will be backsplash, range hood, backsplash. This is going to be behind the oven cabinet and that'll run the microwave and under cabinet lighting. Uh, this, like I said, there'll be cabinets here, so that'll be a place to plug in a phone. That's a phone line, that's, <laughs> the people still use phones. That's uh, outlets there. This will be for the range hood. This will be in the backsplash. This will be inside the appliance garage which works perfectly. I had thought that I was going to need to buy box extenders to come through the back of the cabinet, which would be a pain, and I don't have to do that. But for now, I'm gonna move some of these cabinets sort of into place and get a good idea of how it's gonna look once we get them all set and leveled and shimmed and screwed to the wall. exactly the right width. I just gotta get it up under there. Come on, get in there. Oh, you fit. Oh, that is perfect. Furniture dolly, man. Don't hit the laser. Not very often things work that smoothly. That was nice. Thanks to Bob for making pretty straight walls. Turned out nice. All right, uh, let's see. Now we got a spice cabinet and a cooktop and a corner base. So I'm gonna figure out this corner base because I gotta do something with this duct. And that, I've been dreading that. If you recall, when I built this corner base cabinet, I left it on the creeper so that I could move it. Because this is pretty heavy. All right, now I'm just gonna get this in position. I'm gonna take this cover I have temporarily over my duct off, get this in and see what I need to do to either cut that toe kick or build a little box to stick in there. Because right where that duct is, is partly under this cabinet and partly under the next cabinet. So we're gonna have to get creative. 
All right, now that oven will sit in here. Nice and sturdy. And this piece of leftover Vantec was already cut exactly pretty good. So, so there's enough room in the back for the cord. And then uh, I'll fasten these down to these supports. That's way better than that little shelf. All right, good. And you'll never see it anyway, because it'll be underneath an oven. Okay, I'm gonna center the sink base on the window. It's one of the first things we need to do in getting ready to install cabinets. Measured my center line. And uh, I'm gonna bring this line down to where the cabinet will be. Thank you. line match it up to there now I'm gonna measure for my plumbing figure out where I need to put holes in the floor of the cabinet so I'm doing all this tedious stuff this uh, is a door and drawer 18 inch with an extended style over here to the left and I just have it overlapped to try and figure out how much of this I'm gonna need once I fill out the rest of this line uh, and I need to know that so that I can finish figuring out my duct, which is underneath there. So I'm gonna have another 18 inch drawer and door, just like this one, that sits there. And then there'll be a space for a dishwasher to slide in. So I'm gonna get this one and see if I can figure this out. So I'm right on my line on the floor. Okay. my first little piece made I found a bunch of flashing scraps in the uh, junk pile and I'm gonna use that because why not so I manufactured a little <laughs> uh, thingy and I'm gonna put it in it was like uh, how's it go it goes like this seal it with some duct tape all right there we go there's a hillbilly duct box now I got to cut the register out but I'm gonna wait until I actually get the registers make sure they're right and I got to build the other half of this for that hole which goes in that cabinet And here we go. So I just have the cabinets obviously on their back. I'm building this duct box, which I just finished. And once we set the cabinets, I'm gonna block that space in between so we don't have air going up the cabinets. So I'm basically splitting a, a four by 10 register box, I mean register hole in the floor, turning it into a two inch by 10 inch toe kick register and now I gotta cut that out. Okay, well that, getting that cabinet in the position was a bit of messing around to say the least. It's one of the more difficult ones just because it has so much plumbing and electrical stuff going on, but I got it set down over the pipes with minimal damage, I suppose. Now I gotta put a four x four box there, and that's where the dishwasher and disposal will be powered from. 
And then when we go to install the dishwasher, I'll cut out the back corner there for the plumbing, uh, the supply line and the drain to and from the dishwasher. But that's in position. Got it lined up right on my line there. And I got that little strip in there to keep air from going up in between the cabinets. So for this one, I think we're good. I'm gonna set this trash can pull out. And when I say set, I mean get it in there, get everything shimmed level and uh, get ready to fasten it to the wall. We have to shim between the back of the cabinet and the wall to give us something to drive screws into along this top strip here. And uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to do uh, other than fasten the face frames to each other once we get to that part, uh, as far as fastening the wall, fastening the cabinets down. All right, I've been fussing around with this for about 30 minutes, trying to get everything straight, square, level, plumb, and all that. And this is a little difficult uh, because we got to deal with this tall refrigerator cabinet. So having to get that plumb square and all that with the wall and then working this way, I've got these two fastened together at the face frames and it's so basically turning it into one cabinet and uh, I got everything shimmed up at the bottom. This had to come up about uh, 3 sixteenths on the right side here. Uh, because the uh, the floor changes and kind of drops as you go that way. But these three cabinets are basically one unit, or will be, and then we'll have that space for the dishwasher and then we'll make all of those a one unit situation. So let's see, try to get a good shot here. That's about as good as I can get it. There's a little bit of a dip right here, like a 32nd, which is why that's a little off, but the actual plywood on the sides of the cabinet are lined up. And then lasers don't lie, so that's about as good as I can possibly get it. So I'm gonna fasten these to the wall and call it done. All right, I'm inside the fridge cabinet and I'm gonna fasten this one to the wall first and then build off of that. This is, the IC, this is an ICF wall, so it has a plastic stud every eight inches on center. And I've got it marked on the floor and I've transferred it up to the one, two, three, four places that uh, I'll hit a stud on this backboard. And then there's a, uh, a quarter inch gap between the back of this plywood and the wall so um, I took the piece of quarter inch trim that they sent uh, that was holding these panels apart during shipping and I cut it into a bunch of little two inch shims for putting it right there. And then I'll pre-drill and I'm gonna use a uh, three inch cabinet screw. These have um, a big fat 9 16 wide head, three inches long. It's a number 10 cabinet screw. So you use these to fasten your cabinets to the wall because um, they have more of a surface on the head to really crank it down. It's a T20 Torx drive and they give you the bit and everything. If you need some of these, I'll leave a link below. Actually, I only needed to put in two because this thing is going nowhere. Perfect, I love those screws. That's perfect. Shim right behind my little mark, every eight inches, make sure you're below the top of the cabinet so you don't have a piece get in the way of the countertop. All right, that was a bit of fussing around, but I got it perfect. A um, couple things to note here. This extended style to the right is exactly what I needed to get this fridge cabinet, uh, give me this gap for this outlet. This is really the only place I could have put this outlet. I needed one kind of to the right of the sink, 
and there's no space there. I got just enough space to trim it out, trim out the window. And uh, the gap here, there's a tiny little gap between the back of this cabinet and the wall, and that'll go away once we put the tile backsplash up into there. So there, this little gap here will go away when I screw together all the face frames. That'll close that up. That's gonna be perfect. So we're gonna move on over to here. There's been a question, I had this question, do you do your uppers first or your lowers first? I don't think it matters. Some prefer putting your upper cabinets in so that you, you can get right up against the wall, get under them and lift them. Uh, I'm doing lowers first because there's a lot of mechanicals going on and I wanted to get that done correctly and focus on that. Uppers are pretty simple. I'll just lay some plywood here and use my clamps as spreaders, get them up to where I want. Uh, you can also hang a ledger board the whole way around, lean them up against there, screw them in. I may use a combination of both of that, but I don't have any really huge uh, wall cabinets other than the appliance garage that goes here. So I can pretty much kind of handle that. So I'm going to start on this section of cabinets. Those three are so, sort of one unit and then they'll be separated by that dishwasher. So I have to get this set and then I'm going to work from the dishwasher back. I've got this three inch extended style to the left and that will give me my area that I can trim to get this right. So right about here, that laser is right on there. This side is just about perfect. Then it sort of starts to drop off as you get over to here. There's a little, and it's about, well, three eighths of an inch. Over here, it gets to be about a quarter of an inch. And over here, it's about a quarter of an inch between here and there where it tilts. So I'm gonna have to shim this up before I get this fastened. Uh, trying to think ahead here. This doesn't get any electrical, anything weird. Neither do these. These are just two doors and two drawers. So I can go ahead and set these. Hillbilly ductwork is complete on these cabinets. It's actually worked out pretty good. I was able to use the leftover flashing to make a little box. So now I can return the piece of ductwork that I bought that I was going to make this out of. There's the left side. And then the register goes down in there and spans across the two cabinets. This is the first, this is the first one I did for a toe kick register. And then I blocked off the space between the cabinets on the floor. So that duct splits across two cabinets and comes out the toe kick register. So I'm working on this uh, bank of three cabinets here. I have marked where my dishwasher cavity lines are right there. So this is exactly where it needs to be. This has the face frames pushed right up to it, shimmed up level to the top, and then I clamped this extended style frame to the frame behind it so I can make a mark on the back. Now I have to transfer that mark to the front, tape this off, and cut a line, cut, cut this, with a back bevel so I can scribe this right up to here and keep these cabinets in exactly the position they're in this way. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in because it's set, it's ready to go. Then I'm gonna cut this, screw it in and set it and work that way. Then this wall will be done. So I cut a 15 degree back bevel on this and hopefully I didn't mess it up because I spent a lot of time setting up that cut. I didn't do any damage. I 
and it looks good to me. Now, we'll see if it fits. Well, in an effort to achieve perfection, I had to undo all that and redo it because it was off by like 3 16th. Now, face frame splits the laser beam and that's dead on. So, pretty happy. All right, it's been a while since I recorded any footage. A lot, a lot been going on. Projects going on outside. Got the roof going on. Got JP finishing up the stone, getting ready to start the steps. So a lot of phone calls and a lot of just management stuff. But here's where I am with this cabinet installation. I've got this all set. Those are all fastened to the wall. Face frames are clamped together, but they're not screwed together yet. And uh, I'm about to set this spice cabinet. And this is the last one before the real tall oven cabinet um, and we are going to have to I have been having to shim underneath because the floor drops by just about a quarter a little bit over a quarter of an inch from way over there to right here <clears throat> and we're trying to keep this laser split between the top of the face frame and the very back so it's very tedious it's very time consuming trying to shim all four corners of each cabinet one thing you can do is uh, lay everything on its face frame on a very level surface, fasten the face frames together, and shim in between each cabinet and fasten that, kind of turning it all into one unit and then setting and leveling everything as one unit. That's uh, something I didn't really figure out until after I started. So I'm trying to do each one individually and that's twice as tedious. But pro tip for the future, if you can, fasten multiple cabinets together to create one unit and then level and shim that as you go. Right now, I am, I've got a piece of shim in here between these two walls, which is a half inch, because you've got a quarter inch overhang of the face frame. These are clamped together. I'm about to fasten that. Actually, I just fastened that. Uh, and now I'm about to fasten this to the wall with this shim. And there's only one stud right behind this little 10 inch cabinet and it is right there. So it's a good thing that it's fastened there and it'll be fastened at the face frames and everything is shimmed up and ready to go. So this should fit exactly perfect right there without falling, which would be a pain in the butt. All right, now I'll drill that with a countersink bit and put a cabinet screw in there with the big fat head and this should all be set. Then I'll be able to move on to this and I have to raise this up so I get the bottom of the face frame level with the bottom of that. But that's pretty much all I have to worry about with this big cabinet just because we're not dealing with granite countertops being set on top. The countertop will stop at the side of this cabinet. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, all the cabinets are fastened to the wall. I'm starting to fasten all of the cabinets to each other through the face frame. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. Different cabinets, you can do it different ways. These particular cabinets, I figured out how I'm gonna do these. This is a 
typical door for our cabinets. These, this is a presidential raised profile, one of their nicest doors that they make. Uh, actually, the nicest door they make, in my opinion. And they turned out awesome. Got these little uh, coves in here, um, separate raised panel inside. Really cool, really nice. Uh, all of the doors are bloom soft close hinges, uh, full inch and a quarter overlay. Uh, here's a soft close. You can see how it slowly closes. Most cabinets today that you get uh, have these. Originally what I was gonna try and do is fasten these frames together behind this hinge so you didn't see the screw. And unfortunately I can't do that because there's no place to hide that screw. And I don't wanna use the same screw to mount the hinge to the frame as I do to mount the frames together. In case I ever have to take a hinge off to replace it, I'd basically be unfastening the frames as well. So I don't wanna use the same screw for both functions. Now, that means I have to put it somewhere that'll be visible. You can either use a finished trim screw with a very small head, also as a Torx driver bit, which is pretty common, and you uh, you know pre-drill it, fasten it, and then you can fill the hole, and you don't have as big of a hole to fill. For these, since they're painted, uh, I'm going to use an actual big fat pan head, flat headed trim screw uh, that, with a white head, countersink it, flush, and then fill this and paint over it because they're already painted. So it's a little extra step, but I want to make sure. We have good coverage, and we're using uh, two inch or two and a half inch screws here, because most of our frames are inch and a half. Uh, places like this where I have an extended style, I'm gonna use a different pan head screw. Doesn't have to be the long one, because I'm only going through three quarter inch material here behind this face frame. I'm gonna go in this way, only in places like this where you'll never see the screw because the appliance will be in here. This will have the oven and down here this will be a drawer so once that's mounted you'll never see the inside of the cabinet. Places like this where you'll definitely see the inside the cabinet uh, you know we'll do the face frames and then uh, probably a, a uh, shim in between the walls somewhere above the top of the uh, spacer here where you're not gonna be able to see it from underneath. So each cabinet can be a unique situation as far as fastening the, the frames together. Uh, the one common thing is on these particular types of cabinets, we want all of the doors to be flush with the bottom of the face frame. At least that's kind of what they specify. Kind of like this. And then we'll get our reveal right. You know, make that sort of a quarter inch there. So that's gonna give you your half inch to the top and then whatever your reveal needs to be, depending on the style on your hinge side. Line up the bottoms. So we're gonna put a ledger along the bottom of all of the cabinets so we can just set this on. Uh, I just have a block here, which I could use. I could fasten that together and use that as a common jig. But because our floor is not the same level all around, if I just make a four inch jig, I'm gonna have you know, rise and fall on the doors. So I'm gonna do the ledger on the actual face frame because then I know it'll be level. That's just a lot of talk to say, I'm about to fasten these face frames together. Okay, base cabinets are done as far as installation. Still gotta do the hardware doors and drawers, obviously, but we do that last, as I said before. Overall, this was more difficult than I anticipated. Um, not the actual assembly or installation of the cabinets. cabinets that was super easy. Uh, just had a lot of plumbing and electrical and stuff to figure out that I had to do. I had to cut those register vents and, you know, so all that extra stuff took three times longer than actually assembling and putting the cabinets in. So 
all that's good. We got our outlet for the range. We got a, a junction box under there that runs over here to another junction box for the oven. Got an outlet for microwave and under cabinet lighting. We put an outlet in up there for the range blower and the hood will come down to about here, the hood cabinet. Then we'll have our backsplash. So next, I'm gonna start on the uppers. And I think I'm gonna probably have to start with that corner because we'll have to go off that line for the rest of them. So I gotta make sure that I have my thickness correct for my countertop because this is an appliance garage and it has right and left legs that come down to sit right on the countertop. And we're gonna end up having to scooch the countertop in under those legs. So this has gotta be perfect. So I just spoke with Stan, the magical tile man. If you recall, he built our showers and the floor, the tile floors in the bathrooms. And he's also gonna do our backsplashes. But I needed to talk to him and ask him some questions about whether I needed to do anything special laying out the upper cabinets to account for anything in the back backsplash like grout line thickness and things like that. We're using a three inch by six inch stone tile and with these he's just going to stack them and then when you grout them it's like a perfect pretty line. Uh, no actual grout line that you have to measure for which is great because 18 inch backsplash is six of these. I'm going to leave an eighth just for wiggle room, but these should go in without having to cut any. So that gives me a perfect 18 inch backsplash. So I've come up off the back of the cabinet here, one and a quarter for the countertop thickness. Then up from this line to here is my 18 inches. That laser line is now the bottom of where my cabinets will sit on the wall. So I have to uh, first move the appliance garage over here. I got blocks set up, so I'm gonna lift it up off two and a quarter inches to give plenty of room for the ca uh, countertop to slide in under it. And I'm not gonna fasten it permanently until we do get the countertops and then I'll let it drop down, screw it to the wall. But I need to get it staged and kind of temporarily fastened so I can build off of it and get my other cabinets and my range hood and all that other stuff done. Okay, there's the appliance garage and I've got it propped up on some blocks and raised up enough that we can fit the countertop underneath and it's temporarily fastened at the top where you can't see it to the wall just to kind of give us an idea of what we're dealing with here so i got to fit everything in between that appliance garage and that oven cabinet to the left and by everything i mean our stanisi range hood uh, cabinet and the two 10 inch cabinets to the right and left. And I think I'm gonna, I got these all clamped up. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just fasten them all together and make it into one unit. Try and put that whole thing up there and get it into place. I gotta cut out the hole for that receptacle below that vent. And that's gotta go into that back of that uh, cabinet there. So same as we did in the oven cabinet over here. Go by your laser line and just you know measure from your line to where the outlet is and then figure that out on the cabinet and cut out the hole and it I mean it should fit because it did the last time. So if I can get this figured out and get that in fastened down. Then I've got two cabinets there to the right of the appliance garage. And that's it. I just have to build a fascia soffit little box deal in between the two to kind of tie that together, drill it, and then I'll put a light in there so it all looks like one piece. That's today's project. So a little bit about this range hood. This is a uh, custom Stanisi hood we had made and then painted to match. This is a separate company that makes this. It's got a removable panel right there so you can access your uh, blower wiring and, and stuff like that. Blower goes in there. <clears throat> I think it's a Zephyr that we ordered, which we are still waiting on. Um, so if we can get this up in there, hopefully we can get the blower up in there <laughs> once we do get it. And hopefully that wire is in the right spot and everything works. I did measure for the pot filler 
stub out, which ended up being left of center because it kind of is a weird arm shape. So if I have the output right there, once it's all folded up, it should be centered a little bit there above the range. But that's pretty close to, you know, basically it's gonna fall kind of right in there and then scoot over. I can't imagine that's an approved method for raising a range hood, but I don't have any specialty tools or weird jacks or anything like that. This platform worked great. Just jacked it up, got it centered, it's level. I'm just gonna screw it down, man. It worked pretty good. All right, here's the two wall cabinets. Each has double doors. Got them fastened together. Uh, fastened them down there with a shim, put a screw in there, which I will fill and paint, top and bottom. So that's now one unit. This has the three inch extended style to the left, which I'm gonna to have to trim, because it goes there. And I need the right side of this unit, assembled unit, to be six inches to the left of that window opening to match that side. So once I get that oriented to be on the six inch line, and I can mark where I need to cut the style on the left to match it up, and it will stick out a little bit this way farther than that base cabinet. But I wanted it to frame, I'm trying to frame this window so I can do that soffit fascia deal. And a little bit of overhang of the wall cabinet above the base cabinet I don't think matters because there will be a countertop there and it'll look fine once it's all put together right. I'd rather it look more symmetrical there um, because that's a kind of what draws your eye. So that's what we're gonna do now, is work on fitting this double wall cabinet right there. Just taping this off to protect the finish from the sled of the saw. Now I'm gonna set up this straight edge as a guide for the saw blade. Got everything laid out here. I'm just gonna make this cut. A little bit of patience, perseverance, focus. Look at that, man. I could not be happier with that. Really hard to focus since everything is white, but that little tick mark is what I was shooting for. Pretty sure I'm within a sixteenth right there.
So I've got my six inches there, and six inches there. So I should be able to build that out pretty decently. Squeezy clamps are invaluable. Huge benefit, great tool. Awesome. Okay, so now you should have an idea of what the kitchen's gonna look like, at least the perimeter. Uh, overall, the installation went pretty well. I, no, no big problems. I did have some challenges, like I said before, with the plumbing and electrical, but that had nothing to do with the cabinets. And putting the uppers in was not nearly as difficult as I thought. It's definitely fastening multiple units together into one and then managing that as a unit uh, made it a lot easier as long as you could handle it. Um, and using the clamps and you know buckets and whatever you have and whatever you need. Definitely have a laser, that helps a lot. Everything's perfect. It took a while to get it perfect, but you know, like I said, take your time, focus, pay attention, and don't be in a rush and you'll be uh, successful. So I'm going to wipe all this down because I got it fingerprinted and uh, get it ready to glaze and that'll probably be the next video. Then we'll start putting the doors and hardware and drawers and all that on probably just about in time for our other cabinets to show up. So if there are any questions about this assembly, installation, how these are made, how all any of that, uh, let me know in this video and I'll cover them in the video where we start building the island and the vanities and all that. Um, so that's going to do it for this one. We appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.